Okay, all right, everybody. Fred here, Ice Age Gardener, coming in loud and clear from Zone 10B, halfway between Miami and Homestead. And uh, this time we're going to talk about watering your indoor crop. I am currently using a little rig that I made up uh, from a kit you can buy online. This is the WaterRite Indoor Watering Wand. And it comes with an adapter for the hose. I just switched it out for one that we can use on my reverse osmosis filter system, which is the only way to garden if you want to have good results, simply because there's too many chemicals in the water these days. They've got too much chlorine, too much fluorine. There's 300 of the chemicals, including Viagra. So this is the five-stage APEC, A-P-E-C, on Amazon. 199. This is the five stage reverse osmosis filter. And I upgraded to the PAE 9.2 gallon as opposed to the four and a half gallon that comes stock with this. And I've got, of course, a feeder line that goes over to the fridge. Now you're set. Your water is fluoride free and so are your plants. So then you hook it up. That's called a beer line clamp to the reverse osmosis and out and over it goes. It's a 50 footer giving you plenty of space to move around. So I've confined everything to this one room, but I'll give you a quick demo. Bear with me. And so it goes something like this. You water your, uh, these are Kennebec and French fingerling potatoes. I'm trying them out. I saw the Deep South Homestead gang doing it. And um, so you spend a little time and you get this to soak. When it soaks, it comes out the bottom here, right? You got to soak it once a week. Once a week, at least. I'm taking my uh, test strips. I'm taking water testing strips to test my pH. So far, everything's perfect. Over in this next compartment, I've got some uh, sweet peppers called ahi dulce, or sweet ahi. And uh, they are a really good indoor uh, sweet pepper. And over here, I've got some Yukon Gold. Again, a lot of water on these until they soak out the bottom. Once a week, you want to saturate the plants up here. Lots of new strawberries, lots of strawberries coming in. Over here, more potatoes. These are Yukon Gold all the way up. They're flowering, if you can see that up top. And again, a bunch of water on these guys until it soaks through the bottom. And you come over here, same thing goes for these. These are the new seven inchers. I'm giving those a try. Lots and lots of strawberries. And so you water them once a week until they come out the saucers. You'll notice I have oversized saucers because I'm a bit splashy and I don't want water running everywhere. So I recommend to everybody to use an oversized saucer to, um, to make sure that you have room for overflow. I mean, if you're really, really good and you're one of those indoor pros, then you know, you'll know when to stop. But for the average person, you're going to get some water running out of those little saucers that they normally come with. So this is basically the setup. Um, we've been doing this for a while now. These strawberries are going to be, I believe, a money maker. I'm seriously considering becoming a, a peanut butter and jelly farmer and simply growing strawberries and Georgia peanuts indoors. I'm going to try some peanuts in here as soon as I get some more light from Brad from Hidden Harvest Company. Because these are the little miracle makers. These are the little strawberry miracle plant lights. Uh, over here, I've got about 900 Spanish peanuts and about 40 fake strawberries. To give me an idea how much strawberry uh, I'm going to need to fill up a jar to make some jam. But I have a plan now. See, I've got a little nutritional background, and I can tell you this. If you're growing strawberries and peanuts in quantity... Uh, you can live off that. You can live off peanut butter and jelly indefinitely. Uh, so all it's going to take is a little bit of determination. Here's some real strawberries. Uh, and I'm about to pick all of these and put them. This is a vacuum sealed container. 
And I'm just piling them up until I've got my 40 or 50 to make my first batch of jam. But again, uh, these are remarkable little lights. And uh, if it wasn't for Christian Westbrook at Ice Age Farmer and uh, a bunch of people that have shown me how to do this, and my gardener, John Kohler over in the West Coast, John Piglione and his little tusk dog in jersey these are radical guys you got to follow these guys you got to listen to these guys if you want some uh, how to make soil gary matsuoka laguna hills nursery he's the man uh for how to make soil that won't compress that lasts forever he learned it from his dad a bonsai master so um this is just a little one on how to water and the new watering system that i've got set up and i hope you enjoyed the video hope you got something out of it I will be leaving links to everything below in the description. Until the next video, be safe, and I'll see you then.